Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 3 A Lame Man Healed In Chapter 2 we have seen miracle, witness and response. In Chapter 3 we see miracle, witness and Chapter 4 opposition, which is a different kind of response. Acts chapter 3 verse 1 to 11 Healing a lame man Peter and John went into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. This is either 9 a.m. or by Jewish time reckoning 3 p.m. 3 p.m. seems the most likely because Peter and John were soon arrested and put in the hold, for it was now even tide. Acts 4 verse 3 In Acts 10 verse 30 we read that it was at this time that Cornelius prayed and an angel appeared to him. The hour of prayer was when the priest burnt incense on the golden altar in the temple. It was while Zacharias was burning incense at this altar that the angel Gabriel appeared to him to announce the coming of John in answer to Zacharias and Elizabeth's prayers. This was in Luke chapter 1, verses 8 to 13. It was a most appropriate time to work a miracle of healing as an opening to preaching, for that hour saw the temple courts busy with prayerful worshippers. There would be a vastly more numerous crowd present than would normally be the case. Entrance to the temple on the east was through the gate called Beautiful. This gate is said to have been about 23.5 metres high and 18.5 metres wide. It was made of Corinthian brass and ornamented with silver and gold. And though the temple was so rich, it was still a place of beggars. Peter and John were great friends and had been partners in fishing. They were now even closer companions as apostles in the service of the Master. As they approached the gate beautiful, a lame man asked them for alms. This man had been lame since birth and therefore would never have walked properly. His body had developed in a twisted and awkward fashion. Here was evidence that the law could not save, for he lay at the gate of the temple every day. He was a continual reminder to worshippers of the insufficiency of the law. In fact, he was more than 40 years old, we're told in Acts 4 verse 22, a period of probation reminiscent of Israel in the wilderness. It might seem strange that the Lord himself had not healed him when we realise that the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them as we're told in Matthew 21, verse 14. But there is purpose and wisdom in all things done and not done. Now Peter said, Look on us. They could give neither silver nor gold, for their Lord had said, Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. Matthew 10, verse 9. In any case, Judas had stolen the money. The Apostles knew that only Christ could save, and salvation cannot be by money or works of law, but by faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peter, perhaps recalling this miracle, wrote later, You were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. So the lame man was healed in the name. Proof if further proof is necessary, that Jesus is risen. Meanwhile, the man, leaping and walking, praised God. Everyone who saw must have immediately recalled the messianic words of Isaiah 35, verse 6. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. The people ran together to Solomon's porch, greatly wondering, for that the healing had occurred here was no coincidence. 
It was at this very place that Jesus had been questioned whether he was the Christ. His response that God was his father had led to the accusation of blasphemy and an attempt to stone him, recorded in John 10, verse 22 to 31. The Holy One and the Just Peter launches straight into an explanation of the miracle and an accusation that they had rejected God's Holy One in favour of a murderer. The healing had not been done by their own power or holiness, but in the name of the One revealed to Moses at the burning bush. Exodus says, the God of your fathers. Peter says, Our fathers. The name of their God is, I will be who I will be. The name is prophetic of the one who Yahweh will be, Jesus his Son, the Holy One and the Just. Peter can say Holy One on the authority of the angel Gabriel, who announced to Mary that her son would be that holy thing, or holy one, Luke 1 verse 35. Holy one and just are titles of Messiah and reflect the quality of his character. Because the natural man opposes God's will and all fail, death is the result. Therefore there has to be a saviour, one to do what the Creator could not do, die for the sins of the world. So God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, Paul says in the second of Corinthians 5 verse 19. He will also become in us all that he is himself, in due time. He is a just God and a Saviour, who had declared, There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. Isaiah 45, verse 21 to 22. This verse from Isaiah is applied by Paul in Philippians 2, to Jesus Christ. He says, The Father has glorified his Son Jesus. I will be is now. I have become. Just as they had denied Moses, who gave them the name, and whom Yahweh had sent to deliver them, so they denied Jesus the name bearer who had been sent to be their deliverer. But God had raised him from the dead, for he alone overcame sin and upheld God's righteousness. He is the one foretold in the servant prophecies in Isaiah chapters 42 to 53. In the chapter in Acts that we are reading in verse 13, Son is the Greek word pais, meaning boy or servant. He is the Holy One, of Acts 2, verse 27, who was not suffered to see corruption. Even a man with an unclean spirit had recognised this truth when he cried out in the synagogue at Capernaum, I know thee who thou art, the Holy, the Righteous, One of God. Mark 1, verse 24. He is the king who shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. The Lord, or Yahweh, our righteousness. Jeremiah 23, verses 5 to 6. Unexpected confirmation of his righteousness had come from Pilate, who three times declared... I find no fault in him. So they killed the prince, author or chief leader of life, whom God had raised from the dead. He is the author, the same word, and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12 verse 2. A prince and a saviour for to give repentance to Israel 
and forgiveness of sins, Acts 5, verse 31. He is Messiah the Prince, who shall be cut off, but not for himself, in Daniel 9, verse 25 to 26. He is Michael the Great Prince, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 12, verses 1 to 2. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For him the east gate of the temple is reserved. As we read in Ezekiel 44, verse 3, It is for the Prince. The prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. That God raised him from the dead is final and conclusive proof that Messiah of the prophets is Jesus of Nazareth. It is in his name, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that this man in Acts 3 was made strong and given perfect soundness. Through the same name, by faith, we will likewise be strengthened by the mercy of our Father at the last day. This is the name whereby he will bring all mankind, through faith in the name, into harmony with himself. It is the name of God's character, God's purpose and God's salvation. When Israel finally begin to understand this at his appearing, they will say, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, acknowledging him as they did when he first rode into Jerusalem on the foal of an ass. Now Luke 19. Repent ye therefore. For the time being, Peter gave them the benefit of the doubt. Through ignorance ye did it, he said, as did also your rulers. Even though it had all been prophesied beforehand by the prophets that Christ should suffer, and of the glory that should follow, as Peter mentions in his first epistle of Peter, chapter 1. But those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. In the Revised Version of this quotation it says, His Christ, following Psalm 2, verse 2. Finally, Peter made his appeal. Repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, for there could be ignorance no longer. Here is how to become a constituent of the name, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. These are the blessings of Messiah's reign, when he shall come down like rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth, Psalm 72. The time of restitution of the all things promised to the fathers of Israel, in Psalm 8, verses 4 to 9, and 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, and in other places. Things spoken since the world began, and the word world there is the Greek aeon, meaning the Mosaic age. Even Moses spake of another prophet to come, one like unto himself who would speak the words of God in Deuteronomy 18 one who would bring a new covenant and a new order to God's people. The words, And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people, are similar to Deuteronomy 18 verse 20, but are in fact from Genesis, Genesis 17 verse 9 and 14. Peter is saying here, that to refuse to hear the words of Jesus is a failure to comply with the Abrahamic covenant, which was confirmed by Christ, Romans 15, verse 8. 
It is the Abrahamic covenant, not the Mosaic, which will be fulfilled in the restoration of all things. And if one is not a part of it by baptism, that person will be cut off. And not only Moses, but all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after have spoken of this theme. In fact, it is Samuel's mother Hannah who is the first in the Bible to use the term anointed or Messiah. The Jews to whom Peter spoke were the children, the Greek Pais, the children of the covenant God made with Abraham. Under you first, God, having raised up his son, or servant, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Isaiah had said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. The Lord is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. And I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. Isaiah 49, verses 7 to 8. How richly blessed we are, no, not born of Israel, to be partakers in Christ of the promises made to the fathers of Israel. Genesis 22, 18, Galatians 3, verses 8 and 9. Our apostle, referring to Abraham and David, gives us two illustrations of this blessing in Romans 4. Paul wrote of Abraham's belief being accounted for righteousness, that is, sins forgiven. Otherwise we never could be righteous. And wrote of David saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Romans 4, 1 to 8. Forgiveness of sins is fundamental to the Abrahamic covenant, as we read in Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. And if sins are forgiven, then it is impossible to continue in sin, which would be a denial of God's blessing. This is to be in the name, to be one with the Father, assimilated to divine energy and power. 